Tonight will be the second night we've slept together in our truck tent ever, and we've learned a lot of stuff. We're gonna share with you right now the top 10 things we've learned for budget truck tent camping. So if you're thinking of doing it, this is stuff you need to know. Tip number one, check the weather and realize that the weather report might be wrong. I've got a bathing suit and shorts thinking it wasn't gonna be quite this cold, but it's been a freaking winter snowstorm, and we have been stuck here for two days because it's such a pain to take this stuff down in the snow. So make sure you're prepared with the right clothes. Tip number two, if it's gonna be cold where you're camping, you wanna bring a heat source. We got this Mr. Buddy, it's like $85 on Amazon. There's a link for it below. You wanna bring more propane than, when you, than you need. And this thing, we did use it inside the tent. Never leave the heater unattended while burning. The heater is safe for indoor use in small recreational enclosures, having means for providing combustion, air, and ventilation such as enclosed porches, cabins, fishing huts, trailers, tents, truck caps, and vans. There you have it. Bam. You should also have a carbon monoxide detector. This thing heats this thing up really nicely, but you gotta be really careful. We almost caught a blanket on fire already. Now, if there's low oxygen, it will turn off, but it's not the same as having a carbon monoxide detector. Oh, so warm. Here you go, wife. Warm your feetsies. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Oh. It's 31 outside and 55 in here. And we have the heater on low, so it's barely even on. We got this $189 truck tent camper thing to decide if we want to do truck camping at all to see if we want to invest in a shell and build a thing out a little bit. One thing we didn't realize is that with a truck tent, you got to take it down anytime you want to go anywhere. I mean, if you thought about it, we would have figured that out. but. Setting it up and taking it down is a pain. The first time took me an hour. I'm down to about you know 10 minutes for setup and shorter for takedown, but it's still a hassle, especially if it's windy or snowy, trying to keep things dry. And here's a power tip. If you're taking that thing down and it's snowing, you wanna put a dry tarp over anything you're keeping dry inside there while you take it down so you don't get it wet. Today we were planning on going to see Old Faithful in Yellowstone, but because the weather was so bad and we were so cold and miserable, we're like, ah! That thing's too much of pain. We're in West Yellowstone. This is grizzly country. If you're in bear country, you've got to plan for your food. Luckily here they have these bear boxes you can put your food in and it's kind of safe, maybe sort of, to leave it in your car if it's locked and covered. Bears can see, they know what food looks like. If you have food in your car, you gotta cover it. But the safest thing is to leave it in a bear safe container like that one. I have a question for you more experienced truck camper people. If you've got a hard shell canopy, a full on truck shell, is it safe to have food in there with you or not? Remember that when you're in your tent, you are not safe from grizzlies. So you should not have any food, deodorant, toothpaste, anything that smells at all with you in the tent when you're camping because they will smell it and they might get you. If you are in bear country, you wanna make sure that you have bear spray. We got this stuff here from Walmart. There's a link for something you can get on Amazon. It's worth it. I think it's basically like capsicum, cayenne pepper kind of stuff. Um, read the direction on how to use it. Hopefully we won't have to use it, but keep it nearby in your tent or you can stick it on your belt when you're camping. When you're truck camping, you're probably going to be boondocking a lot. So you for sure want to make sure you bring battery backups and or an inverter. This truck has an inverter built in so I can plug in this and I've got a 400 watt inverter that's in the back seat there. So I can plug in something like this USB hub so I can plug in a lot of devices at once and charge them, including you know, camera gear, batteries, and cell phones and stuff. I can also plug my laptop in here. Getting in and out of a truck like that is kind of a pain. We back up to this to try to use that as a step stool, but with ice and snow on it, you know, I almost kill myself. So you want to bring a little step ladder. There's links with one that we like that we're going to grab for this. It's the same one we use in our RV. You can literally just buy a tent like this one for 189 bucks, throw it on your truck and go truck camping. Bring whatever blankets and pillows and so, you know, a sack lunch or a cooler, whatever. So you don't have to spend any money, but as you do, you want to be smart about it. And one thing you want to think about is getting a heating source and a cooking source that have the same fuel type. This thing takes propane, this takes butane. That's a pain, so I can't use interchangeable canisters. So I regret this. This one's kind of turned out to be great. It's 25 bucks at Walmart, it's great. So you can get stuff to cook with really cheap. You can even buy one of those burners that goes right on top of a propane canister, like this one. Those are like 10 or 15 bucks. So you don't have to spend a lot of money to go truck tent camping. I hear a truck out there, Leela. No, it might be the Ranger. 
Okay, so let's talk bedding. Now, there's a couple of ways you can go. I've seen people where they basically have just thrown a sleeping bag down in the back and gone in here. And you get like an inflatable pad or inflatable bed or something like that and throw that down here. What we got was a mattress topper, and this was for a full size bed. It is pretty dang comfy. The thing that we're not enjoying about it is it limits us. It's not easy to roll up. We also have to put a tarp on top of it and it takes up all the space in here. I personally would rather have this thing kind of rolled up or rolled back during the day and have more room for sitting spaces and everything else. Just to clarify a little more, if you have a big mattress back here or a big topper like this, you have to put a tarp over the entire truck when you're driving for the weather and dust and all that junk. And that tarp has been a pain. I've bought three tarps so far. I'm already scratching my truck with bungee cords. And I just literally about an hour ago, I ordered a cheap, soft tonneau, I think it's called a tonneau cover, that I think is easily removable. So I don't want to invest in a, in a hard cover or something that's big and expensive and you got to pay to install and stuff because I told my fifth wheel I need that thing to be able to come off and on really easily. So for a cheap one, I'm going with that. I would probably never go truck tent camping again like this where I have to tarp this every time I move. As far as blankets and things here, most of it's just our, our regular, you know, blankets, old comforters and things that we've had. And we do have a couple of sleeping bags which have helped. So it doesn't have to be expensive. Honestly, if you're one person, I think it's gonna be a whole different dynamic. It's really a pain having her back with me. It was way easier than not just by myself. <laughs> He missed me. I missed her. I didn't have a snuggle buddy. We are definitely not very organized. We are somewhat organized. We have a cooler. We have a couple of plastic bins with us. Um, we each have some suitcases. What you need to do is make it into smaller, smaller spaces. So I think what we're going to end up getting is some smaller shoebox size things and fill those with each individual things. And you can see pretty clearly that our organization isn't great. We're kind of a mess in here right now and the back of the truck's kind of a mess hey, but i you know what all my art supplies are right here and right there <laughs> i've been able to do art she's so. got her art supplies this tent is where great it's not leaking at all the condensation hasn't been bad it gets snow on it so we gotta kind of do do that here and there <laughs> so it doesn't cave in on us but we've been dry wet hasn't been an issue and cold hasn't been an issue final quick tips you want to bring bags, pack it in, pack it out. We're boondocking here technically because we have no resource, no trash cans, nothing. And a lot of times when you're truck camping, truck tent camping, you're going to be boondocking. So make sure you bring trash bags. Also, you want to bring your own bathroom, which includes a shovel and some of this stuff. And you want to bring more rolls of paper towels than you think because you got to clean stuff. You want to make sure you leave your site better than you left it. Pack it in, pack it out. Common sense. So you've got that shovel. When you get into your space and it's light, go ahead and start digging some holes if you need to dig holes for your bathroom. Yeah, that's really good advice. You know, if you end up having to get up in the middle of the night to do something besides uh, number one, um, you want to have holes ready because digging in the snow at night is would be a drag. We haven't had to do that. Thank goodness. To see the first time we went truck camping, go ahead and click up there.